was June 2009, and the Electronic Entertainment Expo was in full swing. Tons of great titles such as God of War 3, Uncharted 2, and Assassin's Creed 2 were all shown off. Skyward Sword was even teased in a sketchy piece of concept art. But one game in particular really stuck out to me amongst the crowd, a new Metroid game. I remember the trailer as though it was yesterday. So many questions and thoughts were racing through my mind. Who is this guy asking me to remember him? Mother Brain? Holy shit, is that Adam Malkovich from Fusion? I'm Samus Aaron. Wait, did Samus just talk? She is a voice actor now? The game was called Metroid Other M, a strange title to say the least. Many theorized that it was a reference to the ending of the original game on NES. I was practically throwing money at my computer screen. As a die-hard fan of the series, I couldn't wait to play this game. Everyone I knew seemed to regard Metroid as a second-tier Halo wannabe, which is not only backwards but simply untrue. The two series, from a gameplay perspective anyway, were very much unalike. I was sure that Other M would be the game to change that perception, to give the series the respect it so rightfully deserves. The wait was excruciating. And wait I did, because it was another year and two months before this game finally decided to come out, and I went hard. I replayed the entire series in canonical order, finishing with one of my favorite games of all time, Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And then, the game finally decided to come out. I rushed to the internet to check out the reviews, and what I found didn't quite meet my expectations. On both game rankings and Metacritic, Other Am garnered some pretty average scores. I couldn't believe it, and I tried not to. As I played through the game for the first time, I found it very difficult to take things in with an objective eye. The thoughts and criticisms of others were echoing in my head, and the experience became rather muddled as a result. Eventually, I just gave in and accepted that Other M was a bad game. I moved on to other things, and it wasn't until the summer of 2011 that I considered giving this game a second playthrough. I found myself enjoying it more than the first time around and as I watched the end credits scroll across the screen, I nodded somewhat satisfactorily to myself. It's been three years since this game came out, and people are still ripping on it. So I'm here to ask one simple question. Is Other M really that bad? If I'm going to answer that question, I'm going to need to take an in-depth second look at this game. This is my review of Metroid Other M for the Nintendo Wii. Metroid Other M is by far the most story-driven game in the series, even more so than Prime 3 Corruption. It was written and directed by series co-creator Yoshio Sakamoto. In terms of the series' timeline, Other M takes place between Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion. After defeating Mother Brain at the end of Super Metroid, Samus Aran, an interstellar bounty hunter, receives a distress signal from a nearby space station called the Bottle Ship. Upon landing there, Samus encounters her former commanding officer from the Galactic Federation Army, General Adam Malkovich, whose platoon is investigating the bottle ship. Samus and the platoon find that the power has been downed, dangerous alien creatures are roaming all over the place, and that all the personnel aboard the facility appear to be dead. Samus resolves to work with Adam in order to search for survivors and figure out just what the hell happened. And from there it just goes all over the place. Not only does the writing in this game leave a lot to be desired, but the voice acting can be outright terrible at times. Come on, Samus. Let's go next door. Samus's voice actor in particular sounds really lifeless and robotic. The dead I'd seen had been torn apart by something large. This one had been attacked by a different type of creature. Some of the flashback sequences can be so sophomoric and pretentious that I had to check to make sure I wasn't watching cutscenes from Final Fantasy XIII. There are also parts where the game retcons things from the series mythos, mostly things that happen in the Prime games. You know space pirates? They're called Zabesians now. It's a Zabesian. Even though they were never natives of the planet Zebes. Remember how Samus brought the infant Metroid to the Ceres space colony to be studied? and essentially found that it could be used to further the standards of galactic civilization? Well, apparently that was illegal, and the Federation hates her for it. With your predilection for transporting illegal cargo like infant Metroid, I must ask that you restrict your... <laughs> Time for the lady to go home. Someone escort her. There are moments like this all over this story, and while most people probably won't care, that sort of shit really pisses me off. 
That would be like if in Halo 3, the prophets of mercy and regret suddenly showed up alive and well with no explanation despite having clearly been killed in the previous game. In terms of Samus's character, I like that she's been given a more three-dimensional personality and that she actually has fears and emotions and goals instead of just being a generic badass. My only real gripe concerns her character development and overall portrayal. The story's meant to be about her becoming more independent, about overcoming the struggle with her internal consciousness, about coming to terms with her own destiny. Unfortunately, most of the time it just comes off as childish whining. I also can't help but feel that this sort of development would have happened long before the events of this game. It doesn't make sense for her to suddenly be so concerned with Adam's approval, or to suddenly suffer shell shock upon meeting Ridley for the fifth or sixth time. If this game had taken place before the first Metroid game, as a prequel, then things would have meshed better with the series canon. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Overall, it could have turned out so much better than it did if more time was spent on the writing and if more thought was given to how Samus's character should be portrayed. Not a terrible story, but far from a great one. Now let's dig into the game itself. It controls and plays much like the 2D titles. You play by holding the Wii Remote sideways, similar to New Super Mario Bros. Wii or Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Walking around in 3D space with such a dinky little D-pad does kind of turn me off, but it's nothing I couldn't get used to. One thing that does kind of suck is that there's no way to aim. It's hard to explain, but I always found the aiming controls in the 2D titles to be incredibly satisfying. I can say the same for the controls in the Metroid Prime Trilogy, be it with the GameCube controller or the Wii Remote Nunchuck. Other M opts to make the aiming automatic, as there isn't really a way to control that with the sideways Wii Remote. While it certainly works, I'd still prefer to be able to aim manually, and you could sort of do that. By pointing the Wii Remote at the screen, you can switch to a first-person mode. It feels pretty awkward at first, but it becomes second nature pretty quickly. It's great for searching for power-ups, and the pointer controls are responsive enough. Unfortunately, it's ruined by one simple thing. You can't move Samus in this mode, which pretty much makes it useless for fighting enemies. This can make certain boss encounters a real fucking pain. The wall jump, which they renamed the kick climb, makes a return in this game. It's a lot easier to control this time around compared to previous installments. They've also added a dodge roll, called the Sense Move, which lets you avoid enemy attacks without taking damage. While I approve of this addition to Samus' moveset, I find the control to be rather questionable. You use it by tapping the D-pad when an attack gets close to you. It works, but it forces you to spend the majority of boss fights constantly making Samus tiptoe because there isn't a clear sense of timing to it. Dodge rolls in other games are satisfying to use because you have total and complete control over the direction and timing of said roll. Here, you can only do it when the game feels like it, which detracts from its usefulness. If it were to make a return in a later installment, it needs to be given its own button. Another important change they've made is in regards to health restoration and ammo. Unlike the previous games in which you regain supplies by killing enemies or busting open crates, Samus can only restore her health by saving in a navigation booth, or by using her concentration move. When Samus is low on energy, she can use concentration to restore a single tank worth of energy, and refill all of her missiles. I'm not a fan of this particular design choice. Not only does it make missile expansions absolutely pointless, but concentration is also completely unusable in boss fights. To use concentration, you have to be standing absolutely still and because you're constantly getting attacked, there isn't really a way to do that. Why did they choose to design it this way? I have mixed feelings about the graphics. On one hand, I like Samus' power suit design in this game more than I did the Prime series. The CG cutscenes also look pretty good, but in terms of the 3D modeling and overall visual design, I don't think this game looks all that great. The texturing on both the human characters and the enemies lack detail and definition. It almost looks like they just stretch solid color squares over the models and let the lighting do the rest. The art direction isn't all that great either. The environments are bland, lack inspiration, and are terribly lit. Some understandably might blame the Wii's hardware for this, but if Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, which was released three years earlier on the same console, could take such advantage of the Wii's graphical capabilities, why couldn't other M? I wish I could say better about the music. Most of the games in the series were composed by Kenji Yamamoto, but here we've got some stranger named Kuniaki Haishima pulling the strings. 
He's mostly composed for anime, TV, and movies, and thus his work has a very cinematic feel. His background for the cutscenes, it's great. But his music you're listening to whilst playing a video game, especially a Metroid title, just listen to this. Not all that great, huh? One of my biggest gripes with this game, besides the story, is the bottle ship itself. It's more or less a copy and paste of Fusion's biologic space laboratory, except while that game had seven different themed and enormous sectors to explore, the bottle ship only has three. The Biosphere, the Cryosphere, and the Pyrosphere. Not only are these level themes the most generic and overused in video game history, but the game doesn't even bother to put any unique twists on it. Metroid Prime's Fendrana Drifts had a temple, a space pirate base, and an underwater section. The cryosphere in this game is nothing but big glaciers, empty gray metal hallways, and a purple lake. And the texturing is pretty fuggly too. In addition to being run of the mill, the level design is just lacking. It's way too linear. In Other M, you essentially move from save point to save point and jump between sectors of the ship when the plot demands it. There's always a marker in the map telling you where to go, and the map area leading up to it is always clearly revealed. The game also likes to lock random doors for no reason beyond forcing you to advance the plot, which limits your ability to backtrack for weapon expansions. While there's certainly an abundance of puzzles and platforming to keep things interesting enough, more non-linearity would have been greatly appreciated. You don't find your equipment in this game, instead it has to be quote-unquote authorized by General Adam Malkovich, who has Samus switch off all of her weapons fearing they could possibly kill survivors or damage parts of the facility. Samus, Over the course of the game, he gives his okay on equipment as their use becomes necessary. That's how it would work in theory, but in practice, however, that only seems to happen whenever the hell he feels like it. There are so many examples that showcase the half-assery of this particular item system. There's the infamous Hell Run through Sector 3, in which you take heat damage because Adam doesn't feel like authorizing the Varia suit. What am I playing Super Metroid redesign? What the fucking hell? There's the part where one of your buddies is about to take a lava bath because Adam refuses to let you use your grapple beam until you accidentally lock onto a grapple point. Couldn't there have been a cutscene or something? Point is, while I appreciate the game designers tried to come up with a reasonable excuse for nixing your abilities, it fails from a story perspective because it makes no sense, and it fails from a gameplay perspective because it's not intuitive. I'd take Chozo statues over this any day. As for the upgrades themselves, I find that for the most part they were well implemented in this game. The beams stack up, much like the Game Boy Advance titles, and they all work as they have in the past. The space jump is still a blast to use, and the screw attack is just as game breaking as ever. Using the speed booster in 3D is surprisingly intuitive and satisfying, a lot easier to control here than in the 2D games. But the power-up that's been given the biggest upgrade is the charge beam. Not only can it be upgraded to spread out amongst groups of enemies, but you can find upgrades that make it charge faster as well. You can also use it to unleash finishing moves on your enemies. The only power-ups that seem to lack polish are the missile-related ones, and that's due to one simple problem. You can only use them in first person mode, and even then you have to be locked onto something. While that's kinda disappointing, the game makes up for it by allowing missiles to cause more damage than usual. Super missiles are similar to their appearance in Prime and Echoes. You charge up your beam, lock onto something, and let go to launch them. I find that they're only really useful against bosses, to be perfectly honest. And then finally we have the Seeker missile, first introduced in Echoes. Its only use is to open doors. That's it. It's so useless that I honestly forgot they were even in this game. As for pickups, they make a prominent return in this game as well. You can still find missile expansions and energy tanks, as well as e-recovery tanks, which augment the recovery of your concentration move. And of course, there are the Excel charges that I mentioned earlier. They're definitely not as well hidden this time around as in previous games in the series, but finding them is still fun nonetheless. Now it's time to talk about the bosses, which are definitely more fast-paced than in previous titles. Unfortunately, most of them are pretty dull. They usually consist of freezing an appendage and then blasting it off with a missile. The litter fights change things up a little, but not enough to make them all that memorable. There are, however, a few that stand out in my mind. Mostly this guy, Redogian, who can join Bulasis as one of the most annoying boss characters of all time. And that's not because he's a very difficult or even annoying fight. 
The problem is that you fight this guy not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times, but six different motherfucking goddamn times. You think that's enough? Seriously, did the game designers think that he was so much fun to fight that they couldn't help but putting him in six times? And on top of that, he likes to dodge all your beams. So you either have to get really close and personal when you fire at him, or hit him with missiles in the immobile first person mode. It was a pain in the ass the first time, and it does not get any better by the fifth and sixth times. Somewhere along the ride, you encounter Ridley, who's definitely a lot easier this time around. Though it's a relatively fun and action-packed fight, I'm getting really sick of fighting Ridley in every single Metroid game. Where's the Kraid love? The only hard part is waiting for a moment when you can shoot a super missile at him. The final boss is a pain in the ass, but at least it has a cool intro. Wait. Metroid eggs. It can't be. It's a queen motherfucking Metroid. That's fan service done the right way. Unfortunately, it's the most annoying boss battle in the entire fucking game. It releases a bunch of baby Metroids, which you have to freeze and blow up with a super missile. Not only do the bastards like to dodge your charge shots, which seem to be the only thing strong enough to freeze them, but if you bother to stand still and charge your super missiles, you're gonna get overrun pretty quickly. By the way, that's the only time I died in this whole entire game. The only way you can possibly win is to kill them the moment they come out of the Queen. If you can manage to do that, then you have to grapple into her mouth and lay a power bomb. But the game doesn't tell you that you can use them, so unless if you look it up online, you're probably going to dissolve in the Queen's stomach and die. Once you know to do all of that, she's pretty easy, but that does not excuse the confusion. After you've beaten the game, you're given the freedom to explore the ship and find the pickups you missed, which are highlighted on the map for your convenience. I find this epilogue section to be the best part of the entire game. You're given access to the entire ship, there's some cleverly hidden goodies, and in addition to all that, there's also a secret final boss and an escape sequence in which you run from space pirates in the Zero Suit. It's cool shit. Getting 100% unlocks hard mode, which is a real pain in the ass. You want to know how they made it harder? By nixing all the pickups, of course! Yeah. That means you only get access to 10 missiles and a single tank of energy for the entire game. So that means you pretty much have to rely on that god-awful concentration move. How can you call it a Metroid title if there are no goodies to find? What were they thinking? So, is Metroid Other M really that bad? I can certainly understand why some might say so. It lacks that sense of immersion that the Prime Trilogy was able to deliver so effortlessly. The pickups aren't quite as well hidden, the story isn't all that well done, the art direction is uninspired, and the music is okay at best. But despite all of that, I still had fun playing this game. The weapons are just as satisfying to use, tracking down pickups is still fun, and the story does deliver some fun moments. All the problems I have with Other M stem from one basic snafu. It's a Metroid game, a series with an incredibly high quality standard. If it weren't for the graphical brilliance of the Metroid Prime trilogy, I'd likely appreciate the art direction more. If it wasn't for Zero Mission's amazing soundtrack, I'd probably like other M's for its more cinematic approach. If it wasn't for Super Metroid's smaller focus on story, the lackluster plot of this game wouldn't be quite so glaring. As a game on its own, Metroid Other M is good. Not fantastic, not terrible, just good. I'd say that the Metacritic score is about right. Better than a 7, but not quite an 8. But considering that most of the other installments were 9s and 10s, Other M is undoubtedly below the series standards. Would I recommend Metroid Other M? Well, no. While I may be able to enjoy this game to an extent, I can't see most being able to do the same. If you're a Metroid fan and you haven't played this yet, you're definitely not missing out on too much if you choose to skip it. If you're a newcomer who's interested in the series and looking for a place to jump in, this isn't the greatest place to do so. Instead, I'd recommend downloading Super Metroid for the Virtual Console. 
the $8 price tag is very reasonable, and the title still remains a blast almost 20 years after its original release. As for the rest of you out there who have played this game, I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. What did you think of Other M? Do you love it? Hate it? Or do you just find it good but not great like me? Whatever your feelings on this game, here's to hoping that Samus' next adventure is a great one. Until next time, I'm Exo Paradigm Gamer, and I hope you enjoyed the review.